So here is a nice close-up view of the display. Uh, the torch, you see, uh, each pixel has an arrangement of torches here. Th this this pattern is actually has a really cool name for it. It's called a quincunx. Yeah, it sounds vaguely dirty and is a great Scrabble word, though it's eight letters, so it can be a little hard to play. But yeah, I mean, a Q and an X and a, and a C. Well, C's are pretty good. Yeah, so yeah, it's it's a great Scrabble word. Quincunx. Yeah, but that's not the point of this video. The point of this video is showing off my creation. Quincunx. Yeah, so this is where the button presses lead off from uh, the uh, control box and enter the control circuitry. Yellow is the switch for between movement and block manipulation. Uh, red, the red line here, every time a button gets pressed, the red line uh, gets triggered and gets sent through a delay circuit over to uh, a little piston AND gate type thing, which triggers the falling command, the move downwards command. So that's how gravity works. After every, every time you issue a command, it's immediately followed by move downwards. Uh, each each button splits into two colors, or I into two lines. One which gives a command for movement, one for block placement. Uh, like th this one here. Uh, yeah, this this uh, orange one here is jump. This orange one over here is uh, place a block above you. They're different because, well, uh, the jump has a torch here, which goes to a control line over there, which I'll explain. Uh, but they both share. Oh no! Wait, jump, <laughs> jump is actually is actually very special, uh, because whereas place a block above you triggers the look upwards command in the machine, jump triggers the look downwards command, coupled with the uh, m shift up three. So the, the plus two shifting you see when it moves upwards is actually minus one plus three. It's kind of weird. So anyways, uh, button presses... Uh, when a button is, is pressed, one of these lines is deactivated. Uh, the, tor the redstone turns off. When it turns off, these torches turn on... The torches that were, were being suppressed turn on. And when they turn on, they activate the lines below them. These lines connect to a series of... Th these are the, ba the fundamental controls of the, of the machine. The, uh, it's sort of like the assembly code, the, c the control bits. There are things for like shift up, shift down, jump, uh, vertical movement. So that, that's that right... That's, if, if, you're shi if you're shifted downwards and then vertical movement gets triggered, then it saves the downwards shifting, and so your position changes. Because nothing, nothing is final in a, computer in, in a computer until the data is actually saved to memory. Uh, yeah, there's horizontal movement. So place remove block, vertical movement, and horizontal movement are all memory commands, uh, which uh, affect the different memory registers in the machine. And since they, they have to happen after other commands fire, so they all have very carefully determined delays. This was the biggest pain in the ass in debugging, figuring out what the proper delay is. How long after a shift left command do I have to wait before I can actually say move left? That was a pain in the ass, especially when the data would get corrupted and then I'd lose my, the position altogether. Uh, this little thing is just for jumping. You see, normally, in order to move, the block check has to say it's empty. It has to say, yeah, the block I'm looking at is empty. But this, but for jumping, you, it has to be the block I'm looking at is solid. Because you, there has to be a solid block beneath you to jump. And these lines travel down all the way to the machine to their different parts. It's a kind of a long journey. 
and which is why in the debugging process I just I built a little minecart rail. So let's take a ride and see my machine. Whee! The orange and pink are the vertical pos position display thingies. These these thing these pink and orange arches. Oh yeah, I've color coded everything. Pink and orange is for vertical positions. I al I alternate the colors so that I can tell uh so that the adjacent units don't don't blend into each other. Uh this is the uh, block in, block check inversion. These this is the thing where uh, it this block this will block a signal if the if it's not a legal move. Uh, yeah, here is the vertical position register. Up top is the extra circuitry involved for jumping, because that's that's a shift three. A circular three shifter is surprisingly hard to make. It, it's a tangled mass of spaghetti. Ugh. Well, spaghetti's yummy, but I mean, building that wasn't. This is a left-right shifter. That's the uh, horizontal position register. Uh, over here, yeah, d down here with the, where these pistons are, this is block detection. This piston is withdrawn. Yeah, this piston is withdrawn here, and that's how I keep track of what the current position, and because that's where my current position is, horizontally. Uh, and so, the data for what for for what's it for what's in it, currently empty, an empty block. Uh, yeah, this is the data it stored in the RAM of the current row, and currently. So, the machine knows right now that the block I am looking at. Because, uh, which is the current block I'm currently in, because I haven't shifted anything, is empty. Yeah, pretty fancy. Up there is a bunch of XOR gates, which are which are used to toggle. Uh, yeah, toggle blocks. It's the same command, placing and removing a block. It's just flip it from one state to the other. It's a nice compact two block wide XOR gate I designed myself. Uh, I might have a tutorial for it up at some point, but it's really nice and really flexible if you modify it. Up here, I'm standing on top of the RAM itself. This is 64 bits of RAM, again, of a, des of a design I, inv I created, which is much better than the design of RAM I showed in my last video. I meant to do a better video or to, to showcase this, but I kind of got sidetracked building Minecraft in Minecraft. That's a, I think that's... A worthwhile side tracking project. This is the display viewed from the back. Uh, yeah, this this is for the vertical position overlay. Um, this is these helixes give the data to each column. Uh, the purple here means that it's that the display saves new data for each row. Uh, so rows are updated one at a time, and the display actually has 64 bits of memory <laughs> of its own. Uh, the, the RAM that the computer uses for calculation just simply acts in parallel with this RAM, and they hopefully have the same data in them. They're updated at the same time using the same information, so usually... Uh, what's displayed he on the screen will be the same as the computer is calculating with. Not always, as I found out in bug testing. But it's pretty reliable nowadays. Uh, this blinking is a result of... Well, that's, that's how the cursor blinks. I mean, I have a whole blinking unit. Yeah, it's down there somewhere. Uh, my blinking unit. Where's my, where's my blinking blinking unit? There we go. That's how blinking works. I just uh, the the hor the horizontal positional information runs underneath the the entire thing, and I just have a bunch of torches above it, <laughs> uh, lighting it up, and it goes blink, 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 and that's why the pixel blinks. That is, <laughs> that's why it blinks, because of that little blinking unit. 
but blinking a blinking pixel was a very necessary feature. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to find out where your guy was. Uh, over here, this is a yeah. This is part of the the RAM I have set up. It's a well, it's not quite RAM because you can't individually access everything, but it, it's a memory array. This is a D flip flop. That's the uh, that's the SR latch or an RS NOR latch, whatever you want to call it. That stores the data and the writing unit and the write enable command and the data input. I I've used the I use this color coding scheme for most of my stuff. I like to color code everything. It helps me keep track of how it works. Uh, I built these ladders so I could, well, do maintenance because it's a pain in it would be a pain in the ass if I couldn't actually run in here and replace faulty components, which I had to do at least once. Uh, I, I built this thing without... The only sort of cheats I used was I uh, used Inventory Editor to give myself an infinite supply of colored wool and redstone. Because, seriously, I'm not going to shear this many sheep and mine that much redstone. That must be like a few thousand units of redstone in there. No, no. This... And I, I, I also used... Uh, Minecraft editor, so MC edit, to copy paste some things which I built a few working units and then I, I'm not going to build, build it, build, do the same thing four times in a row. And actually the display, I built a two by two pixel, I built two by two pixels and then copy pasted the rest. But other than that, it's all hand built. Built by hand over the course of a month. Well, more than a month. Uh, and planning for this began, like, I, I've been intending to build this for, like, three months, and the last two months I finally got around to actually working on it seriously. There was a little bit of vacation in there. Um, yeah, but it's finally completed. Well, finally completed a week ago. But I finally made the video for it, and that's kind of what matters for internet fame, a YouTube video. Yeah. So, there you have it. Lots of long-winded rambling about Minecraft in Minecraft. And I learned a lot about how how to build computers. And this isn't quite a computer because it's it's a very specialized machine that only does one thing, which is run Minecraft in Minecraft or run a Minecraft-like simulation in Minecraft. And yeah, there you go. It's pretty cool.